Hi, so uh, I'm a big movie geek. I love movies. I've watched countless movies. All the movies you see up there, I've probably seen Reanimator, uh, The Stuff, Basket Case. And when you watch as many movies as I have, the next logical step is you want to start making them. So I wrote and wrote and wrote probably eight, nine, ten feature length screenplays, and I sent them out. And what you see back there is what I heard back absolutely nothing. And it was pretty demoralizing after a while, and I thought, man, I'm just sending these things into the, uh, this great vacuum, and I gotta, I gotta do something to, uh, to get out of this. So one night, I was watching the uh, special edition DVD of uh, Jim Wynorski's classic Chopping Mall, and after the commentary and the special features, I kind of felt like I knew this guy, uh, Jim Wynorski, and I thought, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna send that Hail Mary pass, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna write him an email. So I looked him up on IMDb Pro, and I wrote this impassioned email. I saw his uh, personal address there, and I said, I'm a Seattle-based screenwriter, hungry for projects, I know genre, and uh, do you have any work for me? So if you know anything about film history, you know that Roger Corman is the king of the bees. He uh, gave early jobs to all those directors you see there, and he also has a long-running production partnership with Jim Wynorski. So Wynorski called me back the next morning in response to this email and said, your timing couldn't be better. I've got a project, needs a lot of work right now uh, before Roger gives it the green light. So I was kind of uh, taken aback and he said, I'm gonna send you this script. I want you to take a look at it and I want you to rewrite the first 10 pages. And if I like what you write, I'm gonna let you do the whole thing and I'll uh, talk about co-writing credits. So that's uh, how I came on board of this project, Camel Spiders. I <laughs> rewrote the first 10 pages, Wynorski loved it, called me up and uh, we started working on it the next day. We wrote about eight drafts of this thing, countless revisions. Those are all the uh, files that I had. And uh, eventually Roger Corman gave it the, uh, the green light. So I was operating as my own agent. And one of the things I wrote into my contract is a, a visit to the set. So when I got down there, I had uh, Jim uh, give me a cameo on screen death scene. So these screen caps you see are actually from the, uh, the Russian bit torn bootleg of the film. <laughs> so the, uh, you know, the, the movie went great, and uh, Roger Corman was coming off of a huge success called Sharktopus that was on the Sci Fi Channel. And he had this uh, film that was premiering at Sundance called Corman's World. So everybody was, uh, you know, including Jim, was like, we got to come up with another uh, story for, for Roger. He needs another hybrid creature feature. So I was pitching him uh, in this, on speakerphone in this room of producers, and everything I was throwing out there was a dud. And he's like, if you give me one more bad idea, I'm going to hang up the phone. So I went to the bottom of my list, and I said, well, what about Piranaconda? And they loved it, much to my surprise. And then, again, I didn't hear anything for about four months until uh, this Q&A that you see there. And, and Corman said, uh, in answer to a question, what's your next project? He said, oh, a little picture called Piranaconda. And uh, I had written a bunch of treatments, all sorts of stuff, but I ended up getting cut out of uh, you know, actually doing the, the screenwriting. So you, know, you win some, you lose some. But Jim was a man of his word. And uh, again, representing myself as my own agent, I, I did get this uh, concept by credit, which I don't know if that's ever existed in the, uh, the history of filmmaking, but I was very adamant that I wanted uh, you know, to be recognized for that. So uh, you know, I'm just uh, a guy here in Seattle that writes screenplays. And I challenge everyone out there tonight that if you have an improbable dream, something uh, you feel like you're so far away from, from doing, that you make that call, you send that email, maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow. And when you get in the room that you never thought you'd be in, you find your piranaconda. So remember that phrase. You think you have a good idea, you say, is this a piranaconda? You find that piranaconda, you nail your pitch, and then you deliver on it, you stick the landing, and you get ready for your next project, which in my case could very well be piranaconda versus sharktopus. It seems like a no-brainer. Uh, but you never know how those things work. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, Brad Wilkie.